Hello, everyone. Um, we are back uh, after the summer break. So um, took a few months away, uh, had a new baby, uh, not much time to focus on uh, doing uh, these, uh, these videos, but we are back. Uh, we keep doing them every two weeks, like we used to do. So tonight we are with, uh, with Vi. Um, so this past few months, we released a lot of, um, of uh, new, uh, new stuff on uh, MFR particularly uh, on uh, our TradingView account. Um, I will first do a quick uh, overview of what we released, and uh, then we can share with Vi what we are uh, seeing currently in the market. So let me go quickly to what we have now. So we have released, uh, we have released, uh, I'm trying to move this. Okay, we have released the range. So um, they are real time. Uh, you can use them on uh, different time frames. Uh, we we had released also um, this summer the, the trend. So this is uh, the the yellow the yellow zone that you can see here. So we'll go through uh, some of the tickers uh, tonight. Uh, but yeah, you, it was a very, very popular demand to get access to, to range and it is now open for um, users with a threshold above 150 tickers. Okay, that was the promotion part. Now let's go to what we are seeing uh, in the market today. Uh, Vai, what do you see uh, currently in the market? Hey, first of all, yeah, it's been a while. Uh... Finally, we have uh, some interesting period in the markets. Finally, volatility is back. VIX is not 14 anymore. And uh, by the way, uh, congratulations on your baby. And uh, yeah, we are excited uh, to uh, introduce um, all the tools on TradingView. And uh, in the future, I'm sure uh, more exciting stuff uh will um, be released but yeah so <laughs> what i see in the market <laughs> great day i will maybe share uh, share screen uh which is i believe it's yeah um i will remove this yes a uh, great day uh markets are falling uh at least uh most of the major things are exactly at the low end of the end of day range uh, first of all, quick uh, note that uh, the way these ranges are displayed are that they are shifted by one uh, to the right. So it means that uh, the bar, the, the current bar is always at the end of day range and uh, the, the, the next range values are already showing what's uh, going on for tomorrow. So, so yeah, if we see end, uh, end of day for the ES, uh, low end was uh, was uh, showing uh, 43 37 yeah i mean now we are lower but uh, but uh, we'll see where the close happens so uh, again uh, never uh, buy bearish trends just a great example that uh, i mean we broke uh, broke out from the neutral area first of all he yeah, has spent quite a few, quite some time uh, in and uh, I don't know if trading view uh, adjust back adjusts correctly, but I believe that they do it uh, fine. So yeah, it spent quite some time in a neutral area, and when it broke, it broke. So yeah, never fade that. So now what I see, uh, honestly, I think that uh, the low is near, and. Uh, yeah, of course, it will be funny if if I say that and over the next month we will go <laughs> to below 4,000 or whatever. But anyway, I see, I think the bottom is near. Uh, I will not, you know, talk about any levels or so. Uh, longer term range on MFR still shows some downside. Uh, but um, I will see uh, how the, the market closes today uh, we still have uh, when we are recording we still have uh, some time uh, market is uh, still open but maybe maybe i will uh, buy uh, some spy uh, not a promise but if if uh, market comes back to uh, let's say 4310 4315 on es maybe i will 
Okay, so let's go from major ticker tickers from a regular uh, range perspective. So of course, spy uh, broke trend uh, five days ago. Before that, spent a couple of days in a neutral uh, territory, um, and uh, yeah, now we are uh, at the bottom of end of day range. And for tomorrow, uh, downside is quite limited from regular range perspective. So upside downside is uh, is uh, quite um, big. I can see it from visual uh, picture here, but uh, again, trend is bearish. So of course. Keep that in mind. Uh, QQQ, so QQQ. What we have, absolutely same same story. Uh, at the low end of the range, uh, trend broke and the market is uh, going down. So now I want to talk about this guy, which is, of course, the dollar. So we have this very strong, great move, and this uh, this thing is bullish trend from <laughs> end of July. So I hope you were not uh, shorting the dollars, and, and I hope you are long this thing uh, because it would be sad if you missed that. It was a great setup, and I'm sure that um, all of our uh, subscribers uh, knew that from the beginning. Uh, so yeah, regarding my views. You know, after this uh, big move, uh, and by big move, I'm talking about everything what's happening since the last year, uh, when everyone, including me, was bearish, bearish, bearish. I changed my trading style a bit. I Well, not changed, I adapted, but basically I started doing what I did five years ago, what I was doing till five years ago. So it's mostly scalping day trading uh, futures. So now I'm viewing everything from one, two days perspective. I'm not thinking about uh, what will happen in a month or, or or quarter or whatever. Now I think that I think that uh, we will not see a huge, huge move in equity down move in equities. I mean fast. No, I think that we are close to, to the bottom uh, for this drop uh, and I'm even seeing some opportunities to uh, buy for uh, some for some swing trade with uh, of course proper risk management not all in uh, bonds I think uh, I think <laughs> not much to talk about that bond is uh, definitely not a hedge mm. So, yeah, when was the last time TLT was bullish? Well, it tried to be bullish in July for one day, but we all know uh, what happened then. So, so yeah, uh, I mean, bonds are falling below 90. It's exciting. Uh, Fintbit uh, basically is split into two camps. Some people are telling that bonds will, will collapse further and yields will go to 7% and other numbers other say that it's a best buying opportunity of a lifetime. I'm in a camp one. Yields are still uh, are, are, are still not at the top, I believe. And at least when it comes to yields and uh, fixed income, I mean, in my opinion, never changed since the beginning of this bear market. I was saying same thing last year uh, and so on so situation is still the same i believe yields are not have not stopped yet uh, so i don't know rafael what you want to maybe you you want to add something into this uh, picture because as we can see at least from current period a lot of interesting stuff is going on in the markets yeah some um, some very interesting moves happened also this past few months you had um um one among many was um, oil i remember <clears throat> when um, uh, at first it was uh, nat gas that was starting to move then it was uh, oil i have not checked nat gas uh, for for some time but i remember it was the first one to to move to bullish trend then oil moved to bullish trend and yeah nat gas didn't help didn't hold um, and you can see where it went after the change. So 
it switched to bullish trend on the 7th of July and it's still going which is a very impressive move. We went from $72 uh, for CL on the trend change to now uh, we went, I think, to 93 and changed last uh, last week. Um, and in the meantime, uh, what happened um, with yields was also very impressive. Uh, while many uh, were calling for uh, bonds to, um, to bottom, um, they did not, and yields continued to move on. They have not broken a trade, so I don't know if I can share my screen. Uh, I guess uh, that's the way. Oh, okay, you can see my screen, uh, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So this is, for example, the the two year. The so two year is uh, yeah, really, really, really bullish. So you had the, the change of trend confirmation on the 24th of May, and then it just kept riding, held trade. You had 10 year, 10 year also doing the same confirmed trend change on in mid May, and then we started uh, the move, which has not stopped <clears throat> since then. 30 years the same, the European yields look the same. Uh, it was an insane move. I uh, I think it's the first time uh, we see so many people call for economic collapse and at the same time uh, seeing yields uh, go that far, uh, far um, up. Um, it's surprising, but at least I was not um, uh, longing bonds. Uh, so yeah, that was the one uh, I thought were the outlier oil and uh, bonds. Um, although I was not surprised uh, by those two, it was impressive. Um, like you mentioned, yeah, I was quite surprised by the strength of the market. Uh, NQES that kept on uh, going higher until the the top that we had uh, mid July. Um, I I don't know if we are near bottom. Um, all I see is that I have some triggers that are started to, to appear. Some triggers I watch uh, before um, a potential bottom or a potential top. So I will show them. I mentioned them in the post today, actually, on Twitter. So the one I'm watching are usually uh, the... I usually S5 uh, F, FI. NDFI, R2FI, MMTW, MMFI, MMOH, and MMTH. So um, I want to make sure that I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, okay, I know why. Give me a sec. Okay, so um, yeah, so I'm starting to get some buy, and uh, it's uh, usually in the area below twenty for uh, R2FI that you get uh, you get the bottom. It's uh, the number of Russell stock uh, above the fifty uh, fifty day average. Starting to get a buy also in. Um, in the S and P uh, stocks uh, above fifty day average, um, yeah, and, and the FI is doing uh, to no trigger yet, and uh, some more MFI. I'm gonna show you these ones too. So yeah, another buy. So of course, it's not one signal. You need to add some other stuff, but. Uh, these are the, for me, the only thing I'm seeing right now. I think I got a trigger on zero minus uh, SPX2. So it, for me, it's too early to call for a for bottom, um, uh, especially when you look at um, MFR. So I, I think I did RT I did just now. So you can see that there are still some uh, downside on the normal range and uh, there is no cap yet. Uh, between normal range and uh, longer term range. So um, I'm not seeing it yet. 
sure there are some clues uh, starting to pop, but uh, this thing can go further, especially with VIX now bullish trade, bullish trend, sorry, and no cap. A user noticed that actually before the move. Um, I think it was two weeks ago. Uh, he, he sent me a message saying, uh, okay, I don't know if you noticed, but um, there is a, a cap at the bottom on VIX. It's not going lower. And it was actually the trigger for the move. So yeah, uh, I'm not ready to call for bottom. Uh, it could be the real thing. Um, sure, the it's it's starting to be a little bit extended. Um, but yeah, I need more clues to call for for the end of this move up. So yeah, it's basically what I see. Uh, yeah, VIX you can see here. Um, trade is above trend. It's one of the triggers that uh, confirm that the move is on. Uh, it can go much further. I have no sell yet in uh, in VIX, and the sell are usually quite accurate, actually. The buy are less so. Uh, you can see in previous uh, examples. So these are the sells that I used to get uh, when we had the crazy year in 2022, uh, but now I'm no sell. So this thing can go further, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. Of course, it can it can go. Um, what uh, I'm uh, seeing from a longer term, uh, maybe okay for the first time, I will show what I'm looking at uh, uh, too uh, when I'm uh, making decisions. Uh, a bit of stuff based on volume and auction market theory, but this will be ES. Uh, back adjusted volume bay volume based rollover contract so uh this way i can look into futures uh contracts for years for long term charts and all the levels and price action is accurate without stupid ga gaps and so on so what i want to say now that we are exactly at the volume weighted average price of this calendar year so i'm looking at this uh, chart which uh, is not that it matters uh, each candle is a daily candle but each each rectangle is calendar year so of course we had this previous year now we have this since january so and now we are exactly at the yearly vvap uh, i'm not uh, using vvaps like some uh, strong levels for the short term, but for the longer periods, uh, I, they usually um, give you good clues. So yeah, I mean, uh, if we go below, then uh, we can, uh, of course, we have a lot of a lot more downside. But uh, one thing to note on yes, we are on a yearly VWAP. Another thing to note that we are on a. Uh, previous quarters we've up as well uh, so so i don't know uh, what i am i'm thinking here uh, is that from risk to reward perspective uh, based on upside downside ratios in the range and the things that i have just showed uh, for me it's a good risk to reward uh, scenario to see uh, what the close brings and, and uh, uh, actually um, maybe even to buy some with a uh, relatively small uh, stop which relatively stops small stop stop of course it means based on the potential so uh, i'm trading futures so for the yes it could be like a 30 25 point uh, stop uh, with 100 points uh, or even more uh, potential uh, so uh, i don't know for me it uh, makes sense to try uh, again uh, maybe i will wait for tomorrow but but that that's the view i combine mfr ranges with uh, uh, other uh, tools based on volume and order flow partic particularly i don't use uh, technical indicators some some oscillators or whatever everything i use uh, whether it's from MFR or or not, everything is based on things that actually make sense to me and to the market participants, which is of course volume flow. So, so uh, these are important, and a lot of volume have been traded here for from the beginning of this year. So, 
so so so, so we'll see we'll see uh, but uh, of course uh, i don't know and uh, don't do uh, crazy things with your money because it's very uh, easy to to lose your money and it's very hard then to make it back so so of course risk management is important but uh, again if you are not short if you are not holding short positions from risk reward perspective here is not a good spot to short at all yeah so that was my rant uh, yeah why actually i was checking uh, dax and um i would like to have your your opinion on this i will i will show you something it's uh, so basically the the way the my trade and trend uh, volatility signal works uh, sorry uh, to interrupt. Can you use a futures contract, not uh, not some? Yeah, the problem is I, I don't pay for the I I don't use the. the it doesn't the matter. Account. It will be delayed okay, okay. data, but you will still get data. Okay, so yeah. we'll... I just buy the US. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so yeah, let me check how long it takes to load. Mm. Okay, good. So basically, uh, DAX, so MFR trend, bearish. This is confirmed, right? And uh, it happens sometimes that uh, an asset would go like below the trend, but then uh, climb back up. Um, but one thing I know to like a uh, deep confirmation of uh, the move is really happening. And uh, I can show you afterwards uh, your USD because it happened in your USD is when the trade on daily will go below trend. So basically, this will accelerate the, the move. DAX is is actually turning here. So we are it's not it's not yet right, <laughs> but the trade is about to cross trend, and uh, I can see this move in DAX actually accelerating. Uh, it happened um, this kind of move happened in uh, your USD. I show you quickly, and then uh, I want you to give your opinion on it. But yeah, your USD did the same. We had the cross, and the move was confirmed. And then uh, euro is just uh, like going. Uh, it basically ended the the move that we we had since uh, November twenty two. So, what's your opinion currently on uh, the DAX? And maybe if you want to give your opinion also on your USD, you mm -hmm. can use uh, any of your tools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, of course, uh, DAX is. Uh almost oversold on a longer term uh, longer term basis that's okay. what concerns me uh, also so mm -hmm. it it looks more interesting than the than the yes from that perspective so on a yearly basis yeah it just broke and broke and broke and and, uh, and now we are in previous years uh, territory at least uh, at least uh, testing that so Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, again, I don't trade DAX, and uh, you, you usually b because um, I'm uh, sleeping when <laughs> when the Eurex <laughs> is open. So yeah, no. so yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm I live in Europe, but I live US hours for okay. the last years because of trading. I don't know. Now I'm used to it. Anyway, so. Um, Again, no shorts here, even if it falls further from the risk reward perspective, because I mean, uh, when it's so almost oversold, it's not the time for you to initiate short positions if you don't have any. Now, reasons to be buying, I don't know. Uh, I mean, again, insanely oversold on a quarterly and insanely oversold on a monthly basis. So, so my opinion is. Uh, to use uh, uh, MFR to try to time, but to look for longs. Uh, so, so whenever I'm also, I also don't have my data on trading view comes from interactive brokers. Uh, so uh, here we go. I believe okay, index futures. Yeah. So I also don't have subscriptions for European data, but uh, yeah. So wait for clues uh, of a reversal you said you have any but my opinion would be to only only look for shorts or uh, sorry longs or to wait until we are not that oversold if you are really bearish biased then uh, it's not the time yeah so, so basically what you see now is a lot of um, concordance um 
with regards with a potential um, bottom in many uh, in many assets. So basically, we crash or we bounce. Yeah. So from volume analysis perspective and auction market theory, some of the tools that I use also not only things on MFR. You know, it's it's very hard for a market to keep the price that oversold. It means it takes a lot of volume and a lot of capital. So in order for things like DEX to crash further and very fast, you would need a lot of a lot of volume. And I'm not saying like average daily. I'm I'm saying a lot more. So mm -hmm. uh, because usually how it goes, uh, to keep price to two or three standard deviations from longer term VWAP, uh, it takes a lot of effort. And we see in what I showed uh, in Sierra uh, that, yeah, market participants in DAX had and still have put a lot of effort, effort in pushing this thing down. That's why I'm saying, okay, they will not uh, be able to push it for forever unless unless it's the real crash. So that's the only uh, concern from risk reward perspective. I never initiate short positions when everything is already oversold. Mm, of, course. of course, we understand that it doesn't mean nothing. Market can crash yes, yes, yes. further. But, but if you are really bearish, biased, I mean, look for short clues when market is overbought, not short when it's already oversold. That's my one of the rules I follow. <laughs> that, that's Yeah, but DAX is interesting. Yes, it is interesting. Uh, how about uh, your USD? What do you see? Oh, that one, no. The, that strength in the dollar, uh, I mean, uh, I'm, uh, I don't have a lot of euros Personally, I changed to dollars a long time ago. So, and for now, I'm not converting back. What I see, uh, what I see is uh, euro is going down, <laughs> and I'm happy with that. And I, for now, I don't see any warnings that it should stop. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. uh, dollar is fine. <laughs> that, well, that's my answer. I mean, dollar is fine. Okay, okay. I'm checking quickly uh, what I if I got some. Yeah, and because I'm a um, active trader, I mean, I will say something interesting. Also, I'm looking for a spot. It's not now, don't get me wrong, but also I'm looking for, for a spot to buy some altcoins uh, from crypto space. I expect now uh, crypto to, to fall a bit further, and then I will think that we will also get some opportunity there. Yeah, I'm actually quite surprised by the strength of um, of Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is fine. I, I don't know if you saw my tweet. It was whatever month or six weeks ago. Doesn't matter when. I thought that uh, uh, I was bearish. I thought that thirty thousand will not be broken, mm -hmm. and it was not broken. It worked very well, but uh, then poof. Yeah, when poof, but twenty five is basically the best they they could give. So, so yeah, I'm so I'm surprised <laughs> because Bitcoin. Uh, Every time uh, we have a setup, it just gets uh, yeah stopped at some walls. And I was short. I was short, short from a bit above thirty thousand. I all, all tweeted about that, but then yeah, I, I remember at approximately twenty seven thousand, I covered and yeah. But now I don't care. I I'm not long. Yeah, I'm okay. waiting uh, to see what what will happen. Okay. Uh, quickly, I'm gonna go with um, with uh, gold also because I know that yes. uh, people uh, are very fond of gold. So um, I'm gonna do some quick screen share. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, we are. It's been a long, long time. We haven't done a show, so <laughs> we are a bit disorganized. But it, it's gonna get better. Uh, so yeah, GLG. I mean, it's insane. It's been bearish for forever. And uh, yeah, it's been unable to to switch back uh, in terms of trend. I mean, we 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 had some move in um, in the neutral area, but it could not reclaim. It's just uh, any time it gets uh, it gets there, it gets uh, uh, smacked down. So you can see it here visually. So up when when bearish and tried and tried and tried, and every time it's going down. 
and uh, this is usually not good, right? When you have some an asset that is trying to get out of a neutral area, but always gets smacked down. And uh, now it's, it's breaking my my uh, uh, trade again. And uh, if it breaks trend, then we could start to get the, the real move, especially considering that so the blue is my volatility signal. Uh, blue is starting to rise, and uh, we are pretty far away from uh, from where Vola goes when we have a sell off. So, um, I mean, people are trying to buy gold, saying it's going to go to three thousand uh, in a month. I mean, I'm not seeing it for now. It's stuck in a range, bearish, neutral, bearish, neutral, but nothing there. I mean, you are far better off buying. Um, buying oil when everybody was calling for uh, deflation oh yes so um, and yeah. yeah all of them look the same i mean platinum unfortunately uh, did the same i thought it was uh, it was um it was about to to confirm um after the bottom here i saw it rise but then smack down smack down every time so yeah unfortunately um, yeah, I don't like gold. I don't trade gold, uh, and uh, yeah, because very erratical moves. When it moves, it moves fast, but after that, uh, then it sleeps again. I don't know. I don't like. It. I know that you like trading gold. <laughs> that instrument is not for me. I have no idea how to trade it. I mean, well, uh, the same way as any other asset, but it's not worth for me at all. Yeah, the good the good thing with gold and uh, oil is that uh, it's quite predictable. I mean, uh, except if you have some uh, some crazy news coming out about uh, a pro production or um, you have um, um, an expected uh, FOMC meeting that will release something about rates. I mean, usually the moves are very predictable. So that's regarding why regarding like oil, I agree. Regarding oil, I I agree. And I like love trading CL regarding gold. Yeah, maybe for you it's predictable. <laughs> for me, it's harder. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, well. Yeah, and the ES uh, is up slightly 10 points from the lows. Okay. I was telling you before the show that it will close a little higher. So. Yeah, yeah, you told me, you told me. <laughs> yeah, I saw some... Uh, I mean, I'm, 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 I want to... I want this thing to... To go back up but uh because i want to i want to shop right but uh yeah uh no bias no bias yeah um so yeah man um yeah i think we we covered most of it um yeah yeah now i don't want anything in a long-term basis now i care about what <laughs> assets will do tomorrow maybe day after tomorrow that's all i care and tomorrow i will make new decisions based on new information that market will give me because uh, yeah uh, and uh, i'm also i made a decision in the beginning of this year uh, to follow my process the one that i'm talking about uh, and uh, the one that we created and not listen to whatever's talk on twitter and so on because i yeah, made yeah. the same mistake i always uh, say to others to not do basically uh when last week last year mfr had all the signals to buy and i was you know i'm sure all the viewers remember in their year oh i'm bearish i'm bearish i'm bearish even though everything is bullish and i now i i don't care what twitter say yeah and actually now i'm a more happy i'm a happier person i don't <laughs> i i don't read what people say on twitter i just uh, look at what model says and and that's all i can yeah so uh yeah if i actually regarding that yeah i went back to see uh for example cac and dax and uh I realized they switched uh, very early on last year. I think it was end of October, maybe beginning of yeah. this, uh, of uh, November, and the ride was insane. I mean, it went to all time high uh, and beyond uh, for for both. So um, so yeah, like you said. I yeah. Think, so you, uh, so you know, moment of honesty. Oh. Like I said, all signals were there, uh, and uh, basically, of course, I didn't. I have not lost money because I never go against my signal, but it's not not going against the signal is not the way the signal should be used. You must go with it. So, and of course, everyone remembers that 
I said, yeah, I think it's bullish, but I'm waiting to short for some reason. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah we is, all learn. But, and, uh, yeah, yeah, we are all learning at the same time. And actually, uh, I made, you know, my analysis in my head, what are the most, the biggest reasons. And biggest reason was, you know, that uh, entire, our entire feed and we all were bearish. We were talking to each other. We fed each other with being bearish. And mm -hmm. yeah, so now I don't do that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, know. You... Maybe um, some people ask me why I'm tweeting less, so I promise yeah, yeah. I will I will <laughs> tweet more. But uh, the main thing is just I'm not reading whatever's talk about markets. I mean, I'm doing what I have a model. I know that model has an edge, and not only me, our users also know that already. It's been more than two years, and now I'm just doing what it tells me to do. I don't care if. Twitter account XYZ says the other way. Uh, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> well, I'm 100% with you. So, um, so it was the first one uh, since uh, we stopped before summer for holidays. And uh, I guess some of the people we used to have before, we will have them back on uh, regularly in the future. But first, uh, yeah, we start over with, uh, with the shows. And uh, yeah, uh, I will. I will try to be uh, available, <laughs> available more to talk uh, to talk with Vi. And uh, mm. I guess in two weeks we can do another one, and uh, we will go through. Is there we we at the bottom? Uh, is there require some more? And uh, no bias, like you say, day by day, week by week. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay, so yeah, yeah so so now tomorrow let's see if that yearly Viva holds <laughs> just <laughs> out of interest. Yeah, so um and uh what so we will do our best to uh, do those shows bi weekly and uh, send us questions, messages, and maybe we will do it live uh, when Raphael has more time because I'm sure now doing live shows is not the most important thing uh, in mm -hmm. uh, so but uh, yeah so i hope the show was useful and uh, it was nice talking to you again and uh, and yeah good luck everyone manage risk don't do stupid things thank you guys see you in two weeks and on twitter of course okay <laughs>